In fact, knowledge is one of the most guarded, guarded reality in the spirit. Because spirits understand the place of knowledge, a lot of clearance is required before you are permitted to access knowledge. Knowledge in the spirit is so mystical that you can read the words, but the knowledge will be withdrawn. Because knowledge is not information. Information is what will come about when you interact with coordinated words to bring you a kind of enlightenment about the subject matter. But you see, knowledge in the spirit is deeper than just having some form of enlightenment. You know, in the natural realm, if I tell you this is a room, I've just given you an idea that this is an enclosed place. But in the spirit, when you are told this is a room, everything a room represents begins to happen to you. If we were under the sun or under the rain, and they say room, and they bring you access to that understanding of room, you will be under a shelter immediately. The room will begin to play what it represents. So the information can enlighten you about. But knowledge in the spirit is reality. And so it's, it's deep. That's why you can tell somebody about the spiritual thing. He may never possess it. He may even talk about it. But he will never have it. Because spiritual knowledge is a reality. How do you get knowledge? Number one. You get knowledge by asking or prayerfully studying. The reason I put prayerfully studying is because these kinds of knowledge are furnished by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so you don't, this knowledge, you don't break upon it just because you read a book. While you are reading, a spirit will open your understanding. So you read prayerfully to access this kind of knowledge. Either you ask or you prayerfully study. If it is knowledge you are looking for. In Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, here's what Paul said. Ephesians 1, 17. He said, is that where I started from? Okay, go to verse 16. I want to get that question. Go to verse 15. This is Paul teaching the church how you come about spiritual knowledge. He said, Wherefore well, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, he said, Cease not to give thanks to you for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For what? Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So the way you come into that knowledge is by prayer. The spirit of wisdom, because if the spirit of wisdom and revelation is not working, you will read all the books in the world, you will not have knowledge. The word wisdom is the word Sophia. That is the ability to contemplate and to explain the secrets that undergirds the reality. And revelation is apocalypsis. It means to open up. Because if it doesn't open, the letters will be there, but the reality will be veiled. And so he said, while you are reading, it's the spirit that brings access to interpretation of the dynamics of a reality. And the spirit that opens up, that will bring you to knowledge. So it is from Sophia to Apocalypsis that you come into Epignosis. And it is prayer that activates Sophia and Apocalypsis. So if you don't pray, you will read. But Sophia and Apocalypse will not be at work. And he said, when knowledge comes, he said, something else will happen. He said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The word is fortizo. Fortizo means light is shed upon. This can be a room. This room has the potential of creating shelter. But if that door is not open, you can never access the room. So wisdom brings you to the door. Apocalypse opens the door to you. Then you come in. That is knowledge. But you can also come in and there will be no light. So, you will hit on this stage and fall down. This chair that you are sitting on, it takes light for you to be able to sit on it. If there's no light there, you will hit the chair and you'll be injured. 
And so he said, even when you come into knowledge, there's a technology called Fortizo. He said, Fortizo enlightens you. So you can know exactly what knowledge to apply for what circumstance. He said, when that happens, three things open up. Number one, he said that you may know the hope of your calling. There is a hope tied to what you are doing. Number two, he said that you may know the exceeding riches that is allocated to the believer. There is a wealth available to us. But it will take knowledge for us to access it. And finally, he said that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. The word is negatos. That is power upon power that is available to the believer. And so there is a hope, there is a riches, and there is a power. And that power, the only thing Paul compelled it with, was the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. And that is the highest power there is on the face of the earth. He said, but it takes knowledge to access that kind of power. And that knowledge is prayer that engenders it. And James told us in James 1 5, he said, if anyone lacks wisdom, if anyone lacks functional knowledge, he said, let him ask of him that giveth liberally and upgraded not. There is a liberality with which God is willing to give us knowledge. But we have to ask and ask earnestly, sincerely and deliberately for he said whoever cometh to him must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him the first gateway to knowledge is by asking there are many persons today the reason they remain in their brain is because they didn't add prayer to their study enterprise they've never asked god same prayer paul prayed for the church in Coloss in colossians 1 verse 9 this guy is a spiritual technocrat the level of depth and understanding he commands in the spirit is uncommon he doesn't just know what he knows wow how and the man who knows how is superior to the man who knows what so paul can tell you how to access something he doesn't tell you what is he tells you how to access what is and this is one of the ways he said for this cause also since the day we heard of your faith he said we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding it takes prayer to come into spiritual understanding that one it's not book that gives you. That's why there are many theologians that know nothing about the king. You have not asked, asked before because you think what you know is enough. But I came to tell you that you are not only dealing with men. If you are dealing with men, you can bring the credential of your certificate and experience. You are dealing with spirits. And when spirits are involved, your credential and your experience will count for nothing. Number two. I'm giving you superior prayer point from tonight. And so some of you may need to stop telling God, please give me money. You need to start telling God, give me wisdom. You need to start telling God, give me knowledge and understanding. That's the wisdom of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to verse 12, when God, he gave an offering of a thousand born cattle to God, and God came to him. He said, what do you want? He said, give me wisdom and understanding to be able to govern these people and god said something he said because you have not asked for power for money and the life of your enemy he said what you have asked i've given you and in addition because every time knowledge comes every other thing is added that's why i said thou shalt know the truth the truth shall make you free your problem is not money poverty has trained us to ask only for money the day you start seeking wisdom and wisdom comes money will be a byproduct and the way to gain that knowledge is to consciously ask and it's not a casual request you see colossians 1 9 paul said that prayer is added with intense desire strong desire he said true knowledge is an house built he said by understanding are all chambers filled with every good thing people are asking for good things instead of asking for knowledge and understanding that brings every good thing and that's why they keep having enough to eat but the man who wants to be a captain he knows what to pray for and what he prays for is spiritual understanding. In this month, God will bless us with spiritual knowledge. Number two, how do you access spiritual knowledge? It's by fear and reverence for God. In Psalm 25 verse 14, he said the secrets of God, they are with them that fear him. It's not with them that read. It's not with them that went to a Bible school. He said he will show them his covenants. In Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, he said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Job 28 verse 28, 
The fear of the Lord. This is knowledge. The Lord he said reverence for God is understanding. Now, generation that needs to be taught again the fear, the fear of the Lord. Somebody wants to know about God. He's in church. He's chewing gum. He's exercising his gum. Meanwhile, if you sat before your governor, you won't chew gum and be talking to him. And then when they say pray, say, um, Father, thank you for this service today. Lord, help us. Help us. <laughs> Meanwhile, when John went to heaven, he said in Revelation 5 from verse 1, when he was carried to heaven, he said, the destiny of the human race was in contention. They wanted to know the hope of humankind. And this was the time where custodians need to bring their testimony. And so Revelation chapter 5 verse 1, here was John's dialogue with two entities of Zion. He said, and I saw at the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. He said, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And the first person he saw was a strong angel. Because knowledge is not about stature. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals? He said, no man was found worthy. That's the testimony of the angel. And John said, I wept much. But suddenly, he said, one of the elders showed up and said, weep not. That thing that the angel doesn't know is a past in the higher realms of Zion. He said, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has prevailed. The question now is, why would a strong angel not know something and another spirit in heaven knows it? It is when you study the reality of those spirits that you will discover two things were responsible. Number one is height. And number two is fear and reverence. These guys have 24 thrones. They don't sit on it. The Bible said they fall on their faces. They cast their crown and they say, Holy is the Lord. Because of that level of honor and reverence, all the secrets of God are kept with them. And so when the psalmist was also granted access through prophetic intelligence. He now told us in Psalm 25 verse 14, he said the secret of God is with them that fear him. So when you want to gain access to spiritual knowledge, your heart must tremble at God's presence. If you think God is somebody who can be casual around, then you are not ready for the hallowed matters of the kingdom. And God himself will resist you because he said, don't cast holy things to swine. He said they will trample it underfoot. They don't know the value. And so the extent to which you, rev you, re you revere God is the extent to which God can commit hallowed realities to you. The third way to get spiritual knowledge is by humility, meekness, and brokenness. In Psalm 25 verse 9, he said, The meek shall he teach knowledge and judgment. God doesn't teach everybody. It is the meek that he teaches. A man who is meek is a man who generously esteem others above himself. A man who is broken is a man who generously subdues himself, subjects himself under authority. So both of them speak of the same character. And so when God wants to open you to secret, he's looking at, because the ability to handle the power that comes with knowledge will require brokenness. If you are not broken, that power can keep. There's a kind of knowledge you have. If you say rain, it will fall, it will fall immediately. There's a kind of knowledge you have. If you look at somebody and you say you are finished, the person will die. If you like, gather all the new creation reality. There are realms that are superior to doctrine. No, I can't balance it, so let me leave it. I will go, I will go far. Because when, see, oh, doctrine is tied to dispensation. But realities are beyond dispensation. A man can enter reality now and travel out traffic beyond different dispensation. In fact, he can collocate every dispensation and bring it to one realm. When a man is broken, there is no measure of authority God will withdraw from him. But that authority will come as a kind of knowledge. There's a knowledge you can have now. You can remove somebody from office. You can command nature. It will obey. But it will take a lot of brokenness for that to happen. That's why spiritual knowledge is beyond reading. He said, God resists the proud. James 4, 7. He said, but he giveth more grace to the humble. But how do people grow in grace? Second Peter 3, 18. He said, grow in grace and in the knowledge. Of God. So when God wants to give you grace, he increases your knowledge. And so what God does for the humble is that he increases their knowledge. That knowledge is what gives them authority and glory. We are a proud generation. Don't try to show people that you are humble. The things your life command will show if you are humble or not. Because the proof of humility is not that you said it. It's the kind of authority God is willing to share with you. 
that justifies your humility. The fourth way to access spiritual knowledge by service and stewardship. Many people think they will be so blessed just by coming to church, sit down and listen. That's the lowest level of blessing in the house of God. If you really want to be blessed in the house of God, when you come to the house of God, you look for something to do. Ask those who serve, they will tell you. And if I had time, I will show you from Genesis to Revelation. Nobody who was superlatively blessed in the house of God did not commit his hand to it. Because mysteries, secrets, and knowledge are committed to those who are actively involved in engaging in the things of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Paul said, we are servants of God. He said, therefore, he didn't say we prayed for knowledge. He didn't say we prayed for mystery. He said, because we are servants of God, he said, automatically, we become steward, early. And oh, what a blessing. That a man knows the honor of service. In fact, one of the most potent basis for promotion in the kingdom is service. He said, if you are not faithful in little, you won't be faithful in much. So what God judges to verify whether you qualify for promotion is your faithfulness in what you are doing. Now, if you have nothing you are doing, how can faithfulness even become a reality with which you will be judged by? The reason you find many believers never growing in the things of the Spirit is because they are never involved. You can have 10 textbooks from note. If you are not doing something, you can't have experiential knowledge. I'll give you a story quickly. <laughs> I was, we were commanded to go back to foundation school to learn the basics. I was already a foundation school teacher. And I was like, what is Pastor Chris thinking? We, we will obey. And we went back to foundation school. Everything they were teaching, if you start with the we complete all the scriptures. Anyone you don't add, we add it in our note. In fact, if you are talking in a direction, you give two scriptural reference, we add four. If you start talking new creation, we add we draw the outline before you finish and we are touching the scripture. In fact, sometimes we want the younger students to see our note. So you are writing. Ah, the teacher spoke for five minutes. You are writing one page. What did he say? <laughs> so much pride in knowledge. We are writing. When we now graduated, on the day of graduation, they now started giving awards. They called higher soul winner. Number one, number two, number three. I was not there. Hmm. I'd invited my whole family to come and see the, the star. In fact, when we were walking into the graduation, I was the last person on the line. Walking like Reverend Chris. My hair was well pent. And I sat down behind in an honorable way as a spiritual man. I invited my family members. People I prayed for who were healed, they all came to church. When they called all of that, ah, me that, those days we were not just going to the street to win souls. On Saturday, we will buy football with our money. Take it to a football pitch, dash them the ball, preach to them, arrange buses to bring them to church. You are counting so winners. You didn't count me. Did I waste all this money? No problem. We sat down. They say, highest partnership for ministry material. At least I know that I gave money for Bibles to be sent to India. I know I gave money for inner city mission. I know I gave money for healing school. They called number three, number two. When they almost said one, I almost stood up. Number one, my name was not called. That was when sweat started coming. I didn't know there were pause here to, to generate sweat. Sweat beginning and coming. What happened? He forgot to submit our result. That was the day I would have stabbed somebody to death. He said, see the result. He forgot in the pocket. He was mobilizing buses. You were mopping what? Do you know how much I spent? Do you know the shame? That was when God told me, this is your exam. That one you wrote is your brain. This one is your exam. And if you talk again, you will see. God now told me to empty my pocket as a seed to the pastor. Ah! When I removed the money, that's when tears came down. Tears. The, the tears just rolled down slowly. See, you are a man of flesh. Your exam was against carnality, not intelligence. If I didn't participate, there's no way I would have blown it. So there is a knowledge that is given to you only as you participate. Some of you think you are humble. By the time you stand there to give envelope, and the young boy comes and collects the envelope and says, young man, what do you mean? Give me a good envelope. You will now remember that, wait, do you know I'm a barrister? This boy, are you in the university? 
Or by the time you are in the choir, somebody comes and cautions you. You will not say, wait to come. Is it because I'm singing here? How old are you? You will not know the, the blockages of knowledge. It is in service that God will remove them. And so when God wants you to grow, he will insist that you partake and participate in service. I was a master's degree holder when God told me to go and support a friend of mine who was doing a campus ministry. I was already traveling to campuses, for God's sake. Both of us were pastors in the same ministry. When I came to join him, I was thinking that, oh, we are friends, and of course, he knows what I carry. <laughs> you don't know pride. He knows what I carry. Are we, what do you mean? The guy now heard me and said, and God was the one leading him, because they date we are brothers. He said, here they grow. Uh, grow from what to what? <laughs> is there among these campus students, I'm coming to grow? What is, what is grow? From where to where? He now dragged me to the choir and said, this is the head of the choir. Join the choir. Ah! I will wear my double-breasted suit like Pastor Chris and come to the camp of and stand at the gate. They will now say, stand at the door and give envelopes. The day we had a conference that the apostle was coming with the whole entourage, they now say, I should stand here. Ah! He now stood in front with our spiritual father and was coordinating the service, was updating him on some of the things that was happening. I stood in front like this. Sweat was coming down. Sweat. Well, it was like a bucket of water. I will clean it. It will still come down. I will clean it. You can't break until you serve. And if you don't break, you can't have knowledge. People hear people say things and they think they read a book. Go and buy 10 books and start reading. God wants to dig into your heart to remove the fleshly tendency that makes it impossible for the waters of knowledge and inspiration to flow into your soul. He will carry you through the gate of service. They will offend you. He will build patience. He will build brokenness until your chambers open. That's when inspiration can become a river that flows through you. And when you stand, God has layers. He can flow. Navigations will be many. In service that impacts knowledge. He said we are servants of God. Therefore, we are stewards of the mysteries of Christ. The last gateway to knowledge is purity of heart. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, he said, they that are pure in heart, he said, they shall see God. When a man is pure in heart, what God does is that he opens him up to the chambers of life. Look at Proverbs 22 verse 11. The excellency of knowledge. He said, he that loves me. Cause we cease not to pray for you that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and so in the name of jesus i pray for you tonight receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he said when ananias prayed for paul a scale fell off his eyes and from that day access was given to him to the chronicles of zion i pray for you today every scale that has blocked you from stepping into spiritual understanding they fall tonight and in the name of jesus the lord step into the excellency of knowledge and spiritual understanding on account of knowledge let the glory of god on your life increase on account of knowledge let the authority you access increase and on account of knowledge let honor and access be given to you i bless you with knowledge i bless you with access i bless you with authority and I bless you with increased glory. As you step out of this place, even the things happening around your life will change as an attestation that you have stepped into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, let knowledge become your portion. So, let it be written. And so, let it be established. In Jesus' precious name. That's of knowledge. So, when knowledge comes to you, you can isolate it and you can define it that this one is truly spiritual knowledge because every spiritual knowledge has a nature and so i give you three nature or essence of spiritual knowledge very quickly as we proceed the first thing that characterizes spiritual knowledge is that spiritual knowledge like i said from the beginning is not informative it is life or death oriented when you talk spiritual knowledge the proof is that a kind of life we emerge 
if it is of God. But if it is not of God, a kind of debt will begin to emerge.